This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. Under the order of Melchizedek, which was God taking us back to plan A, we are a nation of priests. We are this holy nation. In fact, a revelation where it says we're kings and priests unto God, that's really a bad translation. It literally says we are a kingdom of priests unto our God. You're a priest. You're a priest and you're a walking tabernacle. All you need is fire to begin to function. Let that sink in for a minute. All you need is fire to function. That's why the fire of God is so important. And we get it so wrong in many of our theologies. Here a few years ago, there was a song went through said, you know, you keep the fire burning. That is not what the word says. God's looking at us and saying, you keep the fire burning, Jack. I give it, you maintain it. In fact, the, there is a Jewish colloquium that we misunderstand all the time. I come as a thief in the night. That is a Jewish colloquium talking about the duty of the high priest, that they would always put the, the, God gave the fire, they would keep it burning on the brazen altar. They had to keep that burning because you couldn't bring strange fire. Why were the sons of Aaron so immediately struck down by God when they brought strange fire? They, by their drunken stupor, reenacted Genesis 3. It was like bringing them the fire of the Nehesh into the temple of God. He says, no, you only use the fire that I give. When I give it, you maintain it. And so the, the newbie priest would be up on the temple mount at night, and they would, and a lot of times what they would do, being young and stupid, anybody ever been there, young and stupid? They would stoke that thing, and it looks, this, this big log looks like an all-nighter, and I'm going to throw it on the fire. And after a while, they get tired, and they lay down by the fire, and they would go to sleep. And in the midnight hour, the high priest would go to check on them as a thief in the night to see about their duties. And they would be, <laughs> and he would have a little pan that he'd take some of those coals, and he'd kind of put it between their legs on their robe, and then they'd put him into a coma. <laughs> Until the moment that it went, <laughs> and then there was a streaker going through the streets of Jerusalem. <laughs> They had been judged for not maintaining the fire that God gave. Hello. How wow. I many know oh, Messiah is going to come as a thief in the night? He said, when I come, will I find faithfulness in the earth? Will I find a people that are maintaining the fire? So if you're a tabernacle, all the furniture of the tabernacle is built within you. This is not taught. Hyper grace hates this. There's a lot of preachers, ain't going to like this. There, there was a procession. You had the brazen altar in the outer court and the brazen labor. Bronze represents judgment. Uh-oh. There's judgment in you. Come on now. There's judgment in you. 
God wants you to, but what the priest would do is they would go to that laver and they would wash in that laver. They would look into the word and they would see what didn't correspond with the word and they would take it and they would tie it down on the brazen altar and they would offer it as a sacrifice unto the Lord. The first thing the fire of God needs to do in your life is to burn the carnality out of you, to burn the flesh out of you, to burn the sin out of you. And many, for many of us, it's our favorite things. It's the, that's, that's what the devil loves to do. But you have trusted in me your whole life. I'm the one who makes you feel better. They know you by name. That's why there's four horns on the altar. You've got to tie that bad boy down. You, and it will scream your name. You're going to need me next week. Don't let it up. Until it's reduced to ash, you leave it there. It's called sanctification. The problem in the body of Christ today is we don't preach the cross. We don't preach the need for a crucified life. You keep on going to God wanting him to deliver you from, his problem, from your problems. And every time he hands you two things, a hammer and a nail, and say, there's the cross. But I want to give my way out. I'm, I'm waiting for another word. Brother Mike, do you have a word for me? Bang, bang. Come on now. Then they would go back to the labor and they would wash the dust off their feet from that. They would wash their hands. We go, they went back. The first, and see how this works. The first time you look, you see that you're a sinner. You go and you put it on the brazen altar of judgment of God and let the judgment of God be poured out upon it on the cross and let it die with Christ. And when you go back to the word, the washing of the water of the word, you now look into the perfect law of liberty and see who you now have become when you're free of Amen. it. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. I'm about ready to have church. I don't know how you guys are sitting there. And once you do this routine for a while... Jesus kind of opens up the holy place and says, why don't you come on in here for a while? Come sit down. There's three pieces of furniture in the holy place, and the only illumination that is given is the illumination of the menorah. You see, there's only illumination of your life. There, I, I, have, I, have, I have trained theologians, and if I can't get them to become spiritual, they're never going to get it. Because it's not just with book learning. There's fellowship in the holy place where the illumination of the Holy Spirit that displaces the fire of the Nekesh begins to come alive in your life as you, as you begin eating and having fellowship with Jesus, the showbread, the bread come down from heaven. Oh, come on. You begin to grow, and there may be times you have to go back out and go back on the brazen altar and deal with things and come back in and go back out and come back in. But eventually, that fire that's on the menorah that gets in you begins lighting the altar of incense. How do I know when the altar of incense has been lit? When your prayers don't sound like a Christmas list. Me. And I want this, and I want a toy train, and I want a trolley. Lord, get my wife off my back. And the Lord says, if you would have put that thing on the brazen altar, she wouldn't have had to bend on your back. But that's just, that, that's just speaking from husbandly wisdom. But that altar of incense begins to burn as you begin to intercede for what the Messiah that you have been fellowshipping with once in the lives of your loved ones. And so there's more fellowship, more illumination, sometimes more burnt sacrifice. And you come back in, there's just the prayer. But see, that's not, and, and that's glorious and that's wonderful, but we went into the Holy of Holies. You can't get into the Holy of Holies unless there's a lot of flesh burnt. Because one of the things, the only piece in the Holy of Holies is the throne of God, which is wood covered in gold, holiness over flesh. Come on. Holiness over your old carnal nature. You begin walking in holiness because you begin putting on Christ. Yes, amen. And then the book of Hebrews says that that altar has been moved, that altar of incense is moved into the Holy of Holies. Well, that's done on the Day of Atonement. It's pressed in there before the priest would go in 
to kind of mask, to kind of dim down the glory of God so that he didn't drop dead, you know? But it takes our prayers to another level, and this is where the court of the Lord is. We need to be able to stand in the court of the Lord and begin to do spiritual warfare the right way. Amen. There's one thing about binding and loosing and all these different things, but there's something about the court of the Lord. Because when we get done, if you're a tabernacle and the devil's looking at you in the darkness of night, this is what you're supposed to look like. How many know if you're a devil, you don't want to mess with that? This is what you're supposed to look like. Whenever this was going on with Israel, all the nations around them went, uh-oh, they're coming. When was the last time you walked into a place and the devil said, uh-oh, he came in? That's the way it should be. We understand this. I want to establish something else here real quick. Everything in the spirit realm operates on law. How many know the physical world operates on law? If you don't believe there's the law of gravity, I'll invite you to come up here and to step off this platform, and we'll see how rudely the, the law of gravity you know, goes into, interrupts your reality. Everything's based on law. Now, the Apostle Paul, in talking about the law of God, we find this in Romans 7. He says, I delight in the law of God. He called it spiritual. Uh, after my inward part, but everybody misses this. I see another law. There was another law warring against the law of my mind that I had been trained my whole life to walk with God. It's warring with it, and I, I need to bring that into subjection. There's two kingdoms, kingdom of God, kingdom of darkness. There's two laws, the law of God, the way of God, and the devil has his own law. It's the opposite of what God's is. You kill, you murder, you steal. An active saintness will try to break all Ten Commandments every single day. Because they generate power from that. There was even occultists that, that channeled from this, from what I believe was a watcher, his name was Ali Esther Crowley, channeled a book called The Book of the Law. And it's one of the nastiest things you ever want to read in your life. But it almost sounds like a lot of Christian theology. Do as thou wilt is the whole of the law. law will under love. As long as it's love, brother. <laughs> well, you little occultist, you get out of the pulpit. Two kingdoms, two laws, God's court. If you have a court, it operates by what? Well, when was the last time you were in, in a court? Do they care about how you feel? No. Oh, but officer, I just felt like going 90 miles an hour in that 25 mile an hour zone now. You need to give me a little bit of break. You find out the long arm of the law has got you. When you begin dealing with the court of the law, you have Almighty God, El Elyon, the only judge. He sits there as a judge. You have your defense attorney. How many know there's a guy named Jesus that lives to make intercession for you? He is your defense attorney. The prosecuting attorney is the devil who always makes all these accusations against the saints. Lucifer's name did not, was not changed to Hasatan or Satan when he fell. Hasatan is a title. If we, if we would go to Israel right now when you would step into a court and they, they introduce the prosecuting attorney to you, he would be introduced as Hasatan. Because it's a court. That court is convened about you. The judge is there. Jesus is interceding for you. He's your defense attorney. The devil is always making accusations. Listen, I got Mike Lake to do this, and it's an open door that I can come into his life, and I can do more, and I have a right. Have you not seen, Judge, what he has done? And what we get into problem is we're a no-show in the court of God. When you don't show up to court, there is a default judgment against you in American court. Because you were a no-show in court. We have been not been taught how to get purified to the place that we can go into the Holy of Holies and come boldly before the throne of grace that we can receive help in a time of need. We need to show up into that court and say, Father, have you seen what the devil has been doing? And he'll say, yeah, but it's under the blood. Yeah, but 
It's under the blood. Yeah, but yeah, but you tempted me and I nibbled at it, but I immediately repented and brought it under the blood. You have no standing in this court. And oh, by the way, judge, the most guilty party in this court is the prosecuting attorney. And I'm asking the judge to give a ruling in my favor to do something about him. The devil doesn't want you to find this out. We covered that one. I should have one more. No, I don't have one more. Well, I forgot to include one in here. Turning the tables on the devil. And I don't think... Oh, well, I forgot a couple of slides. In the book of Revelation, and everybody always quotes this, they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb the word of their testimony, and they love not their life unto death. But we don't understand, right before that it says that he's up there making accusations against them all the time, but the ones that overcome him are by the blood of the Lamb. Look up the Greek word for testimony there. It means to appear before the judge to give testimony. It's not sharing. It's, in that situation, your testimony is not about sharing Jesus with your neighbor. It's about giving testimony before your father who is the judge and said, this is what the devil has done and this is what he has tried to do. This is what he's doing to my family. This is what he has done to my nation. This is what he is doing to humanity. And I am asking Almighty God, El Elyon, to come and to judge the devil and to begin, begin tearing his works apart in the earth. Don't let him get my family. Don't let him get my children. Don't let him have my church. Don't let him have my nation. Come and judge these things that early on. Now, when you look in the sequence of this in the book of Revelation, the next chapter, the devil gets kicked out. <laughs> we, show, we show up, he gets the boot. That's why we have to have the fire of God and let the sanctification process work. Right now, most Christians aren't showing up because if you show up with God as the judge, you're the one running. Uh, 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 oh, 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 Mike, you go. But see, when we do our priesthood, the priesthood is about utilizing the fire of God for sanctification, revelation, and growth. You see, the greatest revelation that you're going to get doesn't come from any of us up here in the pulpit. It comes when you're at the table of showbread under the menorah feasting with Jesus because Jesus is that bread come down from heaven. And he begins to teach you. Then he can take snippets from everything all of us are doing and begins putting it together and begins teaching you how to walk in those third heaven realities. You were created by God to function before the throne in earth. Because you were created to function on all three heavens. Don't let the flesh hold you back. Go to the Word. How many know the Word is very succinct about what sin is? This is sin. Even John, and, and now First John was one of the last epistles written. He said, and sin is the violation of the law. Now you, you look at a lot of preachers and they go say, what? Well, is adultery still sin? Well, oh, yes. Well, you know, we always want the ones that affect us, but the ones that come between us and God, oh, he's okay with that. No, 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 no. no. Sin has always been sin. The cross did not change sin. It changed you and set you free from sin so that you can begin walking in a new life in Christ Jesus. There is so much more that is available to us than we have ever walked in. And God is calling us to that higher life. Jesus said it this way, and I love it in the Amplified. If you let go of this lower life, there's a higher life. There's a higher life that can be lived walking in the Spirit, walking in the things of the kingdom of God. You do not know what God can do through you until you completely surrender to Him. That's one of the things that with Henry Gruber that it inspires me. He's, he, you know, God says go, he'll go. God says don't go, he don't go. I mean, it, it's simple. Go, don't go. God tells you, you do it. 
He's, he's, he's walking in the Spirit as he does it. And whenever God tells him to go, the authority, the provision, everything is there. Well, that's Henry. He's our example. He's our example. You see, we call this, this conference True Legends, and I think it has a double meaning. In fact, I was joking with Steve, and I said, maybe we should call it the Noah Hyde Things That Make You Want to Hide Conference. <laughs> but I, I think that some of the guys, and I do not, in, I'm, I'm like Derek, and it's like you have all these wonderful men of God, and we're here too. Um, but th there, are, there are people that are, are, are in, in a sense, legends in, in the kingdom, in our generation, that have been such a great example. I get Steve Quayle. I, I get him. I'm ex-military. I get the same emails he gets. And I said, I understand you, Steve, and I understand how that sometimes you got to bite your lip and everything else to, with some of the, the blessing emails that you get. <laughs> I understand and respect Tom so much with what they have done. I respect what Henry has gone through, and he's an inspiration to all of us. God is saying, listen, there's, there's a gathering of, of those that are examples of when you completely give your heart to God and to begin functioning in your priesthood. There are a lot of young people here today. God, if, if you get this, you're going to outrun the current generation. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to know how to function in the fire of God. And the rest of us are going to have to run to keep up. And I'm going to say, go, baby, go. Get her done. Let us old ones kind of sit back and cheer on and, and, give, you, and give you notes on the things that we have learned. But there, there's a time of passing the baton. And the, us older ones, we need to be the example. They need to be able to look at us and say, Grandma, Grandpa, Mom, Dad, they came to a place where they told Jesus, I surrender. I'll be what you want me to be. I'm going to start functioning in the kingdom. I don't care what the world thinks. I'm going to do exactly what the word says. I don't care who I make mad. I don't care how upset I make the devil. I'm going to walk in victory. I'm going to walk in sanctification. That sin will always be sin. Righteousness will always be righteousness. And I know the difference between the fire of God and the fire of the Nechesh and the anointing of God and the anointing of Lucifer. I know the difference. And I choose Jesus. That's where we're at today. That's the hope I have for everyone here at this conference is that I've given you maybe some tools and some pieces of the puzzle that all of us are looking for to begin getting closer to God, getting more into the Word, getting hungry for the things of God, hungry for His presence. Every one of you can hear the voice of God. Do you know how you bring unity in the body of Christ? If all of us are talking to the same God and hearing the same thing, it causes us all to walk in the same direction. Amen. That brings unity. It's not compromising with the flesh. It's not compromising with the world. It's uncompromisingly following the leading of the Holy Spirit. And when we're there, we can still do something about it. I've got four minutes, and I want to share some things. We need judgment in America. Come on now. We need judgment. Some things are being called judgment, like the hurricanes. I think it's funny that the hurricanes hit both states that voted for Trump. Kind of an interesting thing. There's also interesting that there's, a, there's been some evidence of scalar energy being poured into it to create it. Uh, I don't think it was really God. I think it was the enemy doing things. But see, I think God can spot judge. When we find that secret place of the Most High, a thousand may fall by your right hand, ten thousand by your left, but it will not come near you. Baby, that's called spot judgment. The, our God is big enough to, to judge the devil in America and leave the Christians alone. Amen. There are some things that he can do. There are, there, there are certain powers that he can break that will cause what they're doing to fall apart for the sake of the remnant because I still believe that we in America and many other nations, we still got a work to do. But we have got to learn out how to cry out for judgment. God, judge the evil. Set your people free. Bring revival. Br awaken the remnant. Open our eyes. Get us out of this techno sorcery slumber. And Father, just this cause us to burn with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And let us burn so bright that others come to see the fire and what it's all about. And then we can share with them what we've been learning. 
We can go to Genesis 3, Genesis 6, Genesis 11, and then expand from there, can't we? Because we've learned it. I've got hope for this generation. I got hope for gatherings like this. Because how many know that you, you felt of God that you had to be here? That this is a divine gathering. Because God wants to empower you and God wants to equip you for the days ahead. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would release a fresh anointing on every single one of us. Father, to seek your kingdom, to seek your face, to seek your word, and to seek our priesthood that you have called us to be. Teach us, high priest, how to be priests in our temples to glorify you, I ask. In Jesus' name, thank you. Dr. Michael Lake. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering Heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken be empowered and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.